Hello and welcome to this video on Tanzu Cloud Native Runtimes. My name is Miles and I'm going to take you through all of the features that come with the Cloud Native Runtimes feature in Tanzu Advanced. So to kick off here, I've got Tanzu Mission Control open. I've got this TKC2 cluster that I provisioned through Tanzu Mission Control. And this has provisioned a Kubernetes cluster onto my on-premises environment. Uh, I've then gone ahead and downloaded the tarball for the Cloud Native Runtimes feature and installed it on that cluster. So we can see that in Visual Studio Code here. I've run the installation and it's already up and running. So what we're gonna look at here is the two components that are included in Cloud Native Runtimes in 1.0. That is Knative Eventing and Knative Serving. So the first thing we're going to look at is Knative Serving. Knative Serving allows you to run serverless type workloads or arbitrary containers and allows you to scale your workloads based on demand, traffic, uh, URLs. You know, uh, you can scale to zero with this functionality as well. So there's a whole bunch of different aspects to this, but we're going to touch on just a quick example to get you up and running with your new uh, Knative installation to prove that it works. And then you can have a look at some more advanced documentation uh, for some more uh, deeper examples. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the, the um, Knative command line for this. And I'll show you what that's doing in Octant, which is our uh, UI sort of framework for, for visualizing Kubernetes objects. So the first thing we're going to do is a KN service create. And you can see here, that I've already done this one before. Uh, I'm passing in the workload namespace as a environment variable. So I'm just using the default one, but obviously you would just swap this to be whatever your namespace is. I'm using the hello world go image and you'll see what that does. It's a fairly simple just echo container, right? Whatever you send it as your target, it'll echo back and say hello and put an exclamation mark at the end. So I'm specifying the image. I'm specifying the text that I wanted to echo back. So you can see the target is from serverless. The user is a thousand. That's just specific for this container. Um, I've also set something here called a concurrency limit. This is non-mandatory configuration. Basically everything after target isn't necessary, but what we're gonna do is have a look at how Knative scales these workloads as well. So to, to force it to scale, it's sort of a, in an unnatural fashion. Uh, we're going to make sure that there is one pod per request, essentially. And I'm just gonna give it a predictable name for the revision so that whenever we go to update it, uh, that, it's, that it's easier to, to find that one that we've already created. So if I go ahead and create this service, you'll see it actually doesn't take that long to do this. So um, the interesting thing about Knative serving is that even when your workloads do scale to zero and you have a URL like this, um, they will not fail to process requests. So even if the pod is scaled down, which it does automatically after 60 seconds, naturally you can tune these things, but the default is 60 seconds. It'll scale all the pods down if there's no traffic. Uh, if there is traffic, then what it will do is hold that allow the pod to come up and then process that request. So if we curl this, so if we say curl our URL, you can see it says hello from serverless. And you might notice that I'm using this sslip.io domain. Uh, basically this is an internal IP address, but I wanted to address it via DNS name. So if you give it uh, this as your DNS name, it will always resolve to the IP address in front of it. So that's just a, a little implementation detail of how, how I set up this lab. So you can see we've got a Knative service up and running. It says hello from serverless. And if we go and have a look at this in Octant here, and we go over to pods, you can see we've got our one pod for our hello world go example. And if I go into Knative serving and look at our overview, you can see that there's one service configuration and a root associated with it, which is that URL that we just curled. So what we're gonna do is we're going to iterate this service itself. And we're gonna say KN service update. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our target. So we're gonna say two CNR, two cloud native runtimes. And we're gonna send half of the traffic, so 50% to the latest and 50% to hello world go one, which is the previous one that we created there. Again, we're gonna keep the concurrency limit at one and the user the same. And we're gonna give the revision a new name, which is hello world go two. So if I go ahead and submit that, 
you'll see that it'll do the same sort of thing. It'll uh, wait for the revision to come online, ensure that the ingress is reconciled, which it already is because we've already accessed this once. And we now have a new version of our application up and running. So if I go back into Octant here, and we go into our namespace overview again, workload, pod, what you'll see here is that instead of there being just one pod now, there will be two pods. And you can see one of them isn't running because like I say, after one minute, it automatically scales to zero, but that won't affect our functionality. And you'll see that in a second. So you can see uh, we've got hello world go, uh, go to is up and running. And if we go and curl that, what we should see is it says hello from serverless. Now, if you remember, that wasn't the second one, that was the first one. So it span up that service very, very quickly and it has serviced that request. Now you can see that hello world go to, because I've been talking so long, has spun back down again. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to send a couple of requests over and over just to show how this round robins. So if we just curl this a couple of times, you'll see there's one from CNR, and it's not a strict round robin, but it will trend towards that. So you can see as we send more and more requests, it'll eventually trend towards 50-50. So we're seeing responses from both of our versions there. Now, another interesting thing about Knative and the way that we've got this example set up is the auto scaling capability. So if I use a tool called Siege, and Siege is, I guess you could think of it as like a DDoS tool or, you know, it's a, it's a load testing tool. So I'm setting there to be essentially 10,000 connections across 100 threads. So each thread sends 100, 100 requests to that URL that we just set up. So if I go ahead and kick that off and we go back into Octant, what we'll see is that workload starting to scale out to deal with all the demand that is coming in from our new Siege workload. And obviously, you know, you wouldn't have a one-to-one -one mapping of container to request in, in any sane sort of environment. This is more just for demonstration. Usually you would set it to something like 100 or so, uh, but usually, you know, you can instrument that based on API latency or whatever your core metrics are for your application. But you can see here, as that's running, it's spinning up more and more pods to deal with that workload. So if we go back into Visual Studio Code here, you can see it's still running. 10,000 requests is quite a lot, but the interesting part that comes out at the end here is you'll notice successful transactions is 10,000. There is zero failed transactions. So that means that even though there's pods going away and coming up during that operation, none of them actually dropped any of their traffic. There were no failed requests. So this lends itself quite nicely to having applications that are able to scale down to zero, not consume any resources if they're not actively being used, but also not fail requests that come in from other parts of the application or from customers so that this allows you to get the most out of your resources, especially in cloud type environments where you're built based on usage. If you can scale to zero and scale up in a reasonable amount of time, and you can see here, they're between 0 0.38 and 1.43 seconds for them all to be processed, which is a pretty good standard deviation. That's a fairly reasonable way to run your application. So that's Knative Serving. That's uh, the new Cloud Native Runtimes package version of, of Knative Serving. So the next thing that we're gonna do is look at eventing. So eventing is usually coupled with serving and you'll have it so that you have events coming in from different sources. So say your vSphere infrastructure or your AWS infrastructure, or you know, IoT applications, whatever it is, they're all sending events into some centralized pipeline, and then you can use the Knative, serv uh, Knative serving and functions to process that data or do whatever it is that you wanna do with it. So what we're gonna do is follow along with an example that we have in our documentation. So if you're following uh, the documentation, you'll have the exact same one here. And what we're gonna do, first of all, is set up a service. So again, this is just another Knative serving service. So you can see it's called event display and it's just running this one container. So if I do KN service list, you'll see that we now have two. We've got our hello world go, which is still at that same URL and we've got event display and that's had a new URL uh, generated for it. 
Now what we're gonna do is set up a broker. Now you can think of a broker as a channel, I guess, for events or um, a, a place where events go to be processed or picked up by the consumers that are actually gonna use them. So say I have a bunch of different sources, they can all push into this one broker and then you can have triggers that look for specific labels or text or whatever. They have some filtering built into them and they pull off the broker and send them to an end uh, service. So we're gonna set up a broker just called default and this is a in-memory broker. So absolutely not recommended for production, but it does work out of the box really, really well. So we're gonna set up this broker and then we're gonna set up a trigger. And if we have a look at this trigger, how it works is essentially it is saying, we are going to take everything from the broker default. We're not gonna do any filtering whatsoever. So just any match, anything at all that goes into broker default, we are going to send to that service that we just created, that event display Knative service. So you can see quite easily how these Knative eventing primitives tie into Knative serving. You know, you can just reference these services and have events trigger those function based services automatically. So if we run this trigger, or install this trigger rather, there's, there's nothing in our broker at the moment, so it won't trigger. So let's fix that. Let's add some data. Let's add a source. And there's this very, very handy ping source that's built in and you can imagine what this does. Uh, it's simple cron job. So every minute, you know, on the minute, it is going to send a, ma a message of hello eventing, which is uh, JSON data. And it is going to send that to the default broker that we created earlier. So if we copy this and we paste it in. So this means that every time a minute goes around on the clock, it's going to send an event into our Knative uh, into our uh, Knative event, eventing broker. And then if we remember, the trigger is gonna take everything from that broker and send it to the subscriber, which is the service event display that we created earlier. So if we go ahead and we take the logs from that container, because it's not a web service, it's just a, uh, it just logs the standard out. So if we watch our logs here, you can see now that we have one event in here and that was sent at 14.27.00. So if we follow this log, instead of just doing a one shot, what we'll see is once a minute rolls over, it'll show us both this event and the second trigger that came from the ping source. Now you can imagine how that can be very, very easily expanded to have more and more sources added, pushing data into these brokers and then having different triggers that are filtering for different labels or names or text or whatever it is to run different services. Now, the nice thing is that this uh, event display service didn't have to know anything about the structure of that data because it's sent in this uh, cloud events format. So you can see that here under cloud events dot event, uh, it says that it's a valid event and then what the actual data is. Obviously you can pull that then into your application and as long as you're using that uh, framework, it'll all just work. And you can see here as the minute rolled over, 1428, we got the same message in from our ping source. Now naturally I said this is an in-memory broker, great for proof of concepts, but if you want something a bit more robust, definitely take a look at the uh, eventing uh, rabbit documentation that we have there. So it will show you how to create uh, the RabbitMQ cluster operator, how to request a RabbitMQ cluster, how to set up that RabbitMQ cluster as your broker. So rather than just using memory, it's gonna use actual persistent disks to store the, the event stream, which is very, very important. And then again, it's basically just the same from then on. We're using the same application. We're gonna pull the same data, but this time it's being persisted to disk using uh, RabbitMQ instead of memory. So that was a quick overview of the Tanzu Cloud Native Runtimes uh, feature that is a part of Tanzu Advanced. There are more examples in the documentation, so go please uh, check them out. There's also a really interesting source that you can use to tie your vSphere infrastructure into this called vSphere Source. So uh, if you have a look in the description of this video, we'll link to that repository. You can set that up and have your, your workflows trigger on events like VM created or stopped or whatever, vMotion events in vSphere, anything that happens at the vSphere infrastructure level can be plumbed up into your Knative eventing pipeline. You can take action on those, building these services with the new Tanzu Cloud Native Runtimes feature.